So we have his speech here, and uh, I think the most important thing about Obama's speech back in 19, uh, 2004 uh, was his idea of trying to unite the two Americas, we call the Red Americas and the Blue Americas. Uh, it's a little bit like in Taiwan, we have the pen green and the pen blue. In the U.S., you have the pen, not, not the pen, but they call the blue states and the red states. Okay, so if you, you know, able to see there is a map here. Uh, but this is a map, later I will ask you to put, you know, the red flag or the blue flag so you will know which states are considered the blue states or the red states. But if we look at the United States, uh, why you have different states evolve and into voting for certain idea, certain party, political party, overwhelmingly. For example, in the South, okay, in America South, in the past, uh, since probably 1960s, most of the states tend to move towards the Republican Party, whereas in the Northeast and the West, West Coast, they are more likely to vote for the Democratic Party. Of course, you know, sometimes it changes. You have a popular president like Ronald Reagan, he will win California, but usually California will vote for the Democratic Party. Uh, a popular Southern governor like Clinton will vote certain Southern states, but most of the time, the southern states will vote for the Republican Party. Uh, so it's a little bit like in Taiwan right now. Pan Green will win the south. Pan Blue will win you know, some of the states, especially here. Xinzhu, Taoyuan, right? These are so Pan Blue. Like if you are Pan Green trying to win a seat here, I think very difficult. Uh, more difficult is where I, my university is situated, Taipei. Wen Shan, two to one, pen blue. Okay, it's like seventy percent voted for pen blue, thirty percent for pen green. I mean, uh, last legislators, uh, legislative election, we have one pen green legislative candidates. He doesn't even have an assistant working with him. He just, you know, just very quietly, you know, go around the business. He didn't spend money because he know he's not going to win. Okay, but in United States, we have a two-party system. Uh, some states are very uh, much pan uh, the blue states, some are the red states. So we will look at the Obama's uh, uh, speech here. So the first one, if you look at the paragraph, uh, I want to ask uh, some of you to see whether you have any idea. Did you study at all? Uh, First paragraph, we have so many thank you here. So, so we want to deal with the first one, Dick Durbin, uh, Wu Yudong. Yeah, do you know who is Dick Durbin? Okay, but he is also the other senator from where? Okay. At this time, what happened? At this time, 2004. Uh, summer of 2004, what was Obama doing? Well, yes, he's trying to help, you know, carry, uh, but what was his position himself? I mean, he's uh, jobless, he's just a professional uh, campaign. I mean, if he, if he doesn't have anything, do you think someone will invite him to give a keynote speech? So he was a uh, state senator before. He, his, he was state senator at that time, but he was also running. Remember, I gave you Obama. He was running for what? For U.S. senator. Okay, so... Each state, two senators, right? 
America has 100 senators, 50 states, 100 senators. So each state, two senators, one already Dick Durbin, but he's not up for election. Okay, American state uh, senator, they have this uh, one third every two years. Okay, so 100, which means one year will be 33, one year 33, one year 34, okay, running for re-election, six years term. So, for example, right now we have what? We have 2010, next year, they're going to, and then, so those who elected in 2010, Six years later, they will do it in 2016. So that's the, the simple math. Durbin, as a senator from Illinois, a Democratic senator, he is not running for election, but he will be a good someone, you know, like we, we, in Taiwan, what do we call? We call Zhan Tai, right? In America, will be, you know, campaign for you. He will be a good campaign uh, someone can campaign for Obama to win the other Senate seat. So two Senate seats from which state? Obama was a senator from which state? Uh, here, we have so many. Which one? You have no idea? Did, did we? I, I think... We, we mentioned a little bit about the, this, right? The audacity of hope. Did, did we mention about Obama? Where? Hmm? Which state? Illinois. Illinois. Okay, now Illinois is famous for what? Lincoln and Chicago, right? So he is a senate, state senator from the Chicago area of Illinois. And uh, now that's the other senator is Durbin. Okay, so we have Durbin now. Okay, next one, Do Zhu Kang. Wang Ting Ru. Okay, uh, the second paragraph, uh, Land of Lincoln. Uh, great state of Alaska, uh, of Illinois, uh, crossroads. Why crossroads of a nation? What does that mean? Where is Illinois? Do you know? Like here? About wh where? Okay. Uh, it's here, right? In the middle. Uh, a little bit toward the, we call the Midwest, but the reason they call it Midwest is, we should have an American map, I forgot to bring it. But the reason we call it Midwest is all the states from here up to here, or even here, this is the Midwest, this is West Mountain. So Illinois is in the middle, you have those five lakes, uh, you know, the five lakes, how many of you know the five lakes? Five lakes is also called homes, right? The Great Lakes of the U.S. Uh, Lake uh, Erie. Lake, uh, what is M? By Chicago. There's a big lake. And you know, you, we think of lake, you think of Sun Moon Lake in Taiwan. This lake when I was there, it looked like an ocean. Michigan. Hmm? And this one, Superior. And this one, Ontario. And this one, Huron. Okay, so next time you will remember homes. Okay, are the five states, uh, five lakes, I'm sorry. So here, Chicago was good because Early in American history, they have the lake connected all the way to New York and going all the way 
to the Atlantic Ocean. So yes, Chicago was a in the Midwest, but it has canal. Remember the Grand Canal of China. So the canal connecting to the East Coast, and then Chicago also, you know,、uh, is in the center of、uh, you know all this、uh, Midwest. So that's the crossroad of a nation. Chicago again.、Uh, People use a word to talk about Chicago or Illinois, especially. Illinois is a microcosm. So, what is microcosm? Chen Ping Ren. 吴凯。许安利 ，Yeah. Do you know what is microcosm? Yeah. So what does that mean?、Uh, a microcosm of the U.S. Okay. In Taiwan, what will be a microcosm of Taiwan? Hmm. Means every person is represented. I don't think it's Xinzhou County. Huh. Or Xinzhou City is not a microcosm of Taiwan. What where will be a microcosm of Taiwan? Ah,、uh, I think it's Taipei County. Okay, Taipei County. You have pen blue. You have pen green. You have very urban. You also have very countryside. You know, back. So so that's a microcosm of every. So Illinois. Is a microcosm of the U.S. means you have big city like Chicago, but in the south, okay, in the south, very close to Missouri.、Uh, the big city of Missouri is called St. Louis, right across. You know, we would talk about, you know, in eastern St. Louis,、uh, you have. If you read the book, you have in the south, people still go to a country club, excluding color people. Only reserved for white. This is Obama in 21st century. You go to a club, you find out, hmm, how come there is no <laughs> no color people here?、Uh, well, they purposely not invite anyone. So very conservative in the southern part of Illinois. So microcosm, okay, industry, agriculture, everything. He Ziyi. Okay.、Uh, in the next paragraph, he said,、uh, "Let's face it. My presence on the stage very unlikely. His father was a foreign student from Kenya. Okay, where is Kenya? Africa.、Uh, which part? East, south, west, north, central. Where? East. Okay, it's in the eastern part of Africa." Uh, in Taiwan, we only know Kenya because they have great runners.、Hmm? That's it, marathon people.、Uh, but Kenya used to be a British、uh, colony, so his father was able to get a scholarship to go to the U.S. But his father, he said, he grew up herding goats. Okay, like a shepherd boy, went to the school in a tin roof shack. That's probably still you can find a lot of that, and his father, Obama's grandfather, cook domestic servant to the British, so that's no problem here. Zhen Quanbo, ah, Bao Jiahao, Guo Liling, um, Fang Dan San. Am I pronouncing this one right? Okay, Lin Zixin. No, Lin Zhenghao. Okay, the next paragraph he mentioned about his father going to Hawaii,、um, uh, America, beacon of freedom.、Uh, what does that mean, beacon? What do you mean by beacon of freedom?
not just leader, but you know, almost like a, a tower, right? Light tower that shine. Okay, so beacon uh, of freedom. Uh, so what was what was the most important symbol in American history and even today when people talk about freedom? There has to be a symbol. Statue of Liberty, okay, and opportunity, okay. So, uh, Statue of Liberty. So this is the beacon of freedom, and that's where they w went to. Okay. So that's his father's side, his mother's side. He said it's very unlikely for someone like him to be speaking to a democratic convention. So mother's side here, from the other side of the world, Kansas. So here. Where is Kansas? Kansas, Kansas. Uh, Kansas actually is, there is a used to be a rock group called Kansas, I think. Kansas. Where is Kansas? Kansas is really in the middle of nowhere. Okay, here. This is Kansas, really in the middle of nowhere. Okay, Kansas, uh, just uh, prairie state we call, prairie, you know, just growing lots of wheat and wheat and wheat, okay, that's the state. There's only one big city in the very east coast by the, uh, you know, Missouri and Kansas uh, border, we call Kansas City, that's it. So. It's an agriculture state, uh, wheat, uh, so in the middle of nowhere. So here, mother's side from a uh, family in the middle of uh, U.S. and father from East Africa. Uh, and maternal grandmother worked on the oil rigs and the farm through most of the Depression. Okay, Chen Yan Ru. Lin Yan Yu. Hong Si Yao Yo Zhi Quan. Okay. Uh, depression. When did depression happen? About what time? Yeah, 2009. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so we have 2009. But what is depression? Depression today we translate into Jingji uh, Da Kong Huang. So, about what time? Yeah, the Great Depression, about what time? You know, like uh, which century? How, how, okay, of course, it should be last century, the, the 20th century, but uh, what, what decade? Okay, in the 1930, right? Starting from 1929, but throughout 1930, uh, never really finished until World War II. Okay, people said the reason, uh, you know, Germany became militarized is because of depression. The reason why the depression finally ended because the U.S. entered the war. But anyway, so you know depression. Uh, but I don't think we call ourselves right now in a economic depression. Uh, we call it recession a lot of time. So what's the difference between recession and depression? Okay. Recession. Like last year, we have this financial, you know, tsunami. That's what people call, right? Financial tsunami. So we have a recession. Recession means your neighbor lost his job. Depression means you lost your job. Okay? <laughs> so you know the difference now? Okay, so next time when you lost your job, you say, yeah, you know, you know this is depression. Only your neighbor says, oh, someone, you know, you heard of someone losing their job. That's only recession. So that, but that's how, how people, uh, by the, that's how Ronald Reagan 
okay, distinguish. And then he said way back in the 1980 campaign against Carter, he said, you know, you will get a good job if Carter is out of job. You know, if you don't vote for the Democratic president at that time, then everything will be better. So, you know, if we are in a depression, you don't have your job. You voted current president out. Maybe you have a job. Okay? So that's uh, depression back in the 1930s. That's how the parents, uh, the father worked there. Pearl Harbor, okay, this is an important day. So we're going to try Li Xing Yi. Uh, when is Pearl Harbor? It's Ben Affleck. Huh? Pearl Harbor. Is that the movie? Oh, that, well, Pearl Harbor. Oh, that's 2001. The movie was shot. I don't know. Have, ever seen that movie, Zhen Zhu Ga? When, when did that happen? About what time? 1941. Okay, December 7, I think. 1941. So that's when America entered World War II, right? World War II broke out in 1939. America entered the war in 1941. So his father signed up for duty. Patton. Patton is a famous general. Uh, in Chinese, we call Patton, Jiangjun, right? And much across Europe, and then back home, okay, the grandmother raised the baby, that's her, his mother, and went to work on a bomber assembly. Okay, now, Li Bo Yi, Zhuang Zichen, Zheng Li Wei, trying to, Li Hong Zhi, Li Xiong Hao. Am I getting the right one? Fan Jiazhan. Okay, now, what is a bomber assembly? Yeah, okay, assemb so usually, you know, when we talk about assembly, assembly, assembly line, right? Shen Chan Xian. Okay, that's what we have. Uh, assembly line, usually very good job. Blue collar workers, uh, highly paid, usually very important work. Unionized work. What do you mean by unionized? Union job. What is a union job? Everybody has to be unified, right? That's where you go to the job, they do the exercise in the morning. Is that what do we call union job? What is a union job? No, no. Union job has nothing to do with the exercise. Okay? What is a union job? It means you. Those workers belong to a union. What is a union? A labor union. So you can bargain together for better wages, better working conditions. You join this association of workers we call union. Okay, so what happened? Teachers, professors, they also join an association. Uh, and negotiate with the university for better working condition or for smarter students. <laughs> okay, so assembly line, usually union job. Union job, very good pay. Okay? Uh, when I was in the U.S. 30 years ago, uh, in the General Motor assembly line, okay, a union job at that time, 30 years ago, is $25 an hour. Okay. When I was a professor in Alaska, uh, during the summertime, we have the, you know, the, the road has to be paved again and again because of the pajo, you know, snow, freeze, and then problem. So those jobs, you know, you hold a sign called detour, road works ahead. That job paid $32 an hour. I want to work you know, during summer for that job. But they said that's a union job. Okay? Well, I cannot get one. You know, just showing a sign, you know, like detour. You know, detour means 改道, 
right? Works ahead, pay, uh, you know, uh, road works ahead. So assembly line, usually good job, and women do not have opportunity to work for that. But because of World War II, women were able to enter because most of the men went to the battle uh, here. So that's the reason the mother, got, his grandmother got a pretty good pay job there. Then after the war, GI Bill, uh, GI Bill is talking about, it's a little bit like you serve in the military, the, the government helped you to pay the education, okay, for the tuition. Uh, and then they bought a house through FHA, Federal Housing, means, you know, kind of low interest rate. Uh, so they were able to buy a house and then move all the way to Hawaii, okay. Okay, so his father was searching the dream. His mother was also, the family moved to Hawaii searching a dream. This is always used in American government, American history, when the two parties are talking about the U.S. They always talk about the opportunity. And opportunity become the Republican, we call buzzwords. means, uh, okay, in Taiwan, I think the Penguin, what would be the buzzword for the Penguin party? Uh, Yang Daifeng. Yeah, what would be a buzzword for a Penguin party in Taiwan? Yeah, buzzword. Do you understand buzz? Like the very key word, important word. Independence or, no, I don't think they would say independent. They say sovereignty, right? Sovereignty, right? 主权. Oh, we love that word, right? And the Republican Party in the U.S. say opportunity, okay? Which means they do not want a lot of government to, uh, uh, to intervene. Uh, maybe... They will be, you know, both parties will talk about freedom, but they have different idea of freedom. But opportunity is a, a key Republican word, but also using for, from the Democrats as well. Okay, common dream, two continents, no problem here. Okay, they talk about, okay, abiding faith. Okay, this is the word that uh, Obama will continue to replace religion. His book, The Audacity of Hope, a chapter called Faith, not a chapter about religion. Okay, faith is a little bit different than religion. So how do we di distinguish the two? Lin Jingqi, yeah, how do we distinguish religion and faith? Zongjiao and Xinyang, what's the difference? What's the difference? More general. Okay. Maybe broader than religion. But religion almost implied that you have a organization. Like, you, you know, you go to a, a certain church, synagogue, or in the case of, uh, you know, the, the Muslims, uh, you know, they have their own uh, mosque, right? So mosque, cathedral, church, uh, Buddhist temple, okay? So that's what we call religion. Uh, they also have maybe a text, you know, some kind of books you believe, you read. But faith may be more abstract, something you believe, okay? Uh, so he talked about the faith, the possible. In the faith here, maybe more confidence here about the possibility of the country. Uh, African name, Barack. Okay, now, one time he also 
call himself, uh, you know, uh, a, a, a different name. I think it's called Barack. Uh, but Barack Obama means blessed and a tolerant. Okay. Now, this is the word the Democrat loves to use. Tolerance. So what do we mean by tolerance here? Wei Pu. Uh, Lin Bo Yu. Yeah, what, what do you mean by tolerance? Yeah, well, no, I don't think forgive, but you, 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 you accept someone even though you don't agree. Right? This is a buzzword for Democrat. Okay? So, for example, Obama, he, he himself might not be supportive of abortion or gay marriage but he will be tolerant to gay people or people who have abortion. Okay. Uh, a few years ago, my wife and I went to University of Wisconsin. Uh, Wisconsin is a very liberal university. And my wife and I attended what we call parents orientation for freshmen. Do you have that in Tsinghua? No, for parent to get orientation like okay you only have student orientation no parent orientation you don't call Xun Mian now I mean who is actually in a drill just Xing Sen Suo Ming Hui okay how about that orientation so parents also you know we sent our son to graduate to college so we went to the you know university and then my wife had a little bit trouble of uh seeing, you know, lesbians kissing one another, you know, openly on campus. Okay? So my wife said, uh, does that happen all the time? She raised the question. So then there's this young student helping the orientation. Say, uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, we, we consider ourselves a very tolerant campus. Okay? <laughs> so, my, my, I, I, you know, I almost like you know, this is this is the state. You know, my wife. Uh, sometimes I say, you know, don't tell other people your husband is teaching political science, American politics, because you know very little about American politics. But anyway, Wisconsin is the, one of the few places in Madison, the capital and the campus area, they elected a lesbian U.S. Congresswoman. Okay, she. You know, it's like. A open lesbian, not a closet one. Okay, an open lesbian is elected from that part, so very tolerant. Okay, so Democratic Party will use the word tolerant. Okay, uh, so this is the word they use about you know uh, the uh, America, uh, which is very tolerant. So name is no barrier to success. That's not always true, okay? In America, a lot of people, I mean, the government said, you know, you can have a funny name like Barack Obama or Chen Xian Yan. That's a very funny name, right? But you can still do it. But in the election, a lot of times, you find uh, people got elected, not because they are very famous or they are doing good job, but they, their name is Michael Smith. Okay, instead of someone like uh, uh, Kaczynski, you know, that's a Polish name, right? Uh, or someone getting elected like Yin Su Ha, a Korean name. Uh, so so this, uh, sometimes people have this idea. They want to, they feel uh, Bob Jones, that's, that's my neighbor, okay? Uh, some kind of, uh, you know, uh, Middle Eastern name, Muhammad, ooh, Muhammad. You know, they worry about that, right? So I, I think Obama, in his book, he said, in the very beginning, he said what? He said, someone right after September 11 said, you know, I'm sorry. You know, your political future ended today because Obama, no, no, Osama bin Laden, right, of Al-Qaeda, just attack the United States, and your name just rhymes with Osama, Obama, Osama. 
Huh? So that's uh, uh, a pity. But he, he felt at that time, this is 2004, that there was no barrier to success. Okay? The best school, uh, okay, reach, uh, you can reach your potential. Okay. Uh, next one, Chen Wei Ru. Ma Ru Rong, uh, Ma Long. Yeah, okay. Uh, here he talk about uh, diversity of my heritage. And in, at the end here, they also use this word, uh, a Latin word here, a prolibus unum. Okay, this you can find in all the American quarter. You know, money, they will have this a pluribus unum. Out of many, one, and diversity. That's the that's a good word, and also, again, it's a very important word, okay, for uh, the United States to have this word we call diversity here. What do you mean by diversity? Hmm? Like, uh, I'm someone supporting diversity as well, in. in National Zhengzhi University. I proposed one time, way back, t 10 years ago, about uh, diversifying the student body of our university. He said, wait a second, what's the problem with NCCU student body? I felt at that time, I've, no offense, maybe you have someone from the same high school. I felt that Zhengzhi University is almost like Zhongshan Nü Zhong the Dashue Bu. Okay. So I tried to limit the number of Zhongshan Nü Zhong student. You know, I said, you know, this is not, you know, you know, you, you should not have your college classmate going to the same high school, the same middle school, the same elementary school, and the same kindergarten. Okay, I want diversity. I want people to, you know, have different background. So I proposed something. I said, you know, 5% of NCCU students should come from parents with less than junior high education. Okay, 5% should come from low-income family. 5% should come from remote areas. Okay, so finally we have this, what, STARS program right now. Uh, that's good. You know, you started, uh, your university is the, you know, the past finder. You know, you did start the Fan Xing Jihua. So that's good. Uh, I think you need to interact with students of different background so you will know what happened. Otherwise, uh, when I was in college, we have some students, we went to a classmate's hometown, and then one American, uh, not American, Taipei grown, uh, uh, Taipei girl, she suddenly realized that watermelon didn't grow on a tree. Okay? Because she has never seen watermelon before. Um, so you, when you have classmates, you went to different house, right? It will be better. So diversity is very important. Diversity of heritage and heritage means father from what? Where? From Kenya, from Africa. Mother from where? From Kansas. Now, in Taiwan, we have a big problem. Uh, when we uh, think of uh, people of mixed marriage, you know, their kids, uh, we call mixed blood. Actually, that's a Better word we call mixed blood, right? There is an even worse description. I don't want to mention that, right? Uh, but we, I can write it. I don't want to write it in Chinese. I write it in Pinyin. I think it's this something. Is it Z H or Z A? Is it Z or Z? Which one? This one? The right one? Okay, so I got it right. So ZZ, okay? So that's what we call the person, right? ZZ. Huh? But in the United States, a lot of people have some, some, some blood from different... So in the elementary school, I remember my son went to the elementary school and came back home one day and said, Dad, 
are we just 100% Chinese, nothing else? I said, yes. What's wrong? He said, that's not fair. You know, my classmate has one-eighth of German, a quarter of Indian. You know, we, we have nothing else? <laughs> okay, I said, okay, I'll, I'll do some research, okay, <laughs> to find out whether we have anything else. Okay, so finally we found out my wife's great-grandfather is a British. Okay, my wife's last name is Xia, Summer. Okay, my oh Shea Shea. Okay, that's the the the. It, he is he is a priest from you know Great Britain. So that's the name they uh, assume Sha. Okay, because I do find my father-in-law had blue eyes. Uh, then we found out later. So my son has, I think, one sixteen uh, of British. Uh, so that he made, that made him happy. Okay, <laughs> like finally you have something. Okay, but that's diversity, uh, which uh, it's a considered to be positive. Uh, you know, you know, you just have different or, uh, heritage, and so he. Obama has, you know, at least half African, half, you know, North American, and then he's live, trying to live his parents' dream, and also talk about my two precious daughters, uh, Malia and Sasha. So he said he is he know that this is part of the large story of America, and. It was not possible if there was someone before him, so he was able to stay, stand before the audience as only a state senator speaking to the national convention here. Okay. Uh, next paragraph, we have a few interesting ideas here. Liu Qianya, Wang Huiru, Zheng Jiezhi. Okay, Jen, Miss Chen. Uh, this is uh, a little bit BS, but it's good. Okay, uh, he said that America was great because it's not the power of the military or the economy or the height of our skyscrapers. So. We can also say, you know, in Taiwan, we are such a great country, not because of the 101, right? Not because of what? What else? We, uh, I'm, oh, not because of the corruption of our military, uh, uh, not because of the recession of our economy. But uh, one thing, you know, he said, it's about this declaration. So what was that declaration? We hold this to be true. Uh, you know, self-evidence, all men are created equal. What are this? From where? Which document? Which declaration? Hmm? Declaration. The, the most famous ones. There is only one, you know, very famous one. Back in the 18th century, Thomas Jefferson was the one who drafted this. Declaration of dependence. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. You know, you would do that. Okay, next time when you get married, you say, "I declare my dependence on my husband." Ha ha! I don't have to do anything now. That's you know, my goal is just to get married. Do we have that kind of person and depend? You know, independence. Okay, so no problem, independence. But I think today we should say declaration of interdependence. Right? We are all interdependent. Okay? Uh, you're going to help your husband, your husband is going to help you, your wife will help you, so uh, interdependent. But independent, okay, maybe, you know, that's a... Uh, so here we have a self-evident. What do we mean by self-evident? What is self-evident? Hmm? Clear? Okay. Uh, 
like, do we have to say today, uh, even, you know, it's a sunny day, it's self-evident, you know, yeah, you see the sun, you know, it's a, so that's a very clear, created equal, endowed by the creator. Okay, now, what do we mean by inalienable rights? Inalienable. Hmm? Yeah, what's the word inalienable? No, I N A L I E N A B L E. No, not alien. Okay, <laughs> has nothing to do with alien, but yeah. Or you can say that yeah, yeah. It, it, well, alien means something different from you, right? Inalienable means something. It's here, cannot become an alien. So what is it? Something that cannot be deprived. Something you cannot take away. Your rights. Okay, so what are the rights? Uh, should we blow up this a little bit? Maybe. I don't know whether you can see that. If we blow up this a little bit. Uh, is the, where, where is the blow up stuff? Here. What do you think? 40? Okay. So this inalienable rights, where is it? Okay. Among those are life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. I think we all know that now. Life, our life cannot be deprived. Our liberty cannot be deprived. So we should let our former president go. Uh, we should let him continue to pursue his happiness, right? So that's uh, the those are the inalienable rights. Okay. Uh, very simple dreams. Okay. Small miracles. Okay. Uh, I think that this this is easy. Uh, how many people are still being talked in the evening? Huang Bo Yu. You still living at home? No, in the dorm. Okay. So now. At home, when you go back to, you know, go to sleep, did your mom still tuck you in? Do you understand what it means by tuck in? Like making sure your arms is not outside the blanket. Do they do that still? Do your parents do that? You know, making sure your, your you know, uh, you are covered. So... Bed and clothes, safe from arm. Uh, well, this is uh, the same in Taiwan. We can say what we think, write what we think without hearing a sudden knock on the door. Uh, I don't know about the previous generation, but at least, you know, my generation, I never worry about that. Uh, and we have an idea and start our own business without paying a bribe. In Taiwan, yes or no? Hmm? Liu Ying Chen. Yeah. Do we have to pay a bribe to start a business? Do we have to pay a bribe to start a business in Taiwan? Do you understand bribe, bribery, paying money to a government official? Do we have to do that in Taiwan? You know, if you want to start a business. Of course, no. Right? But it's going to take longer. <laughs> right? So when you pay bribe, you just make it a little bit faster. A little bit easier. That's it. But uh, if everything is legal, I think you can start a business without paying a bribe. But if you want to, we call expedite the process, make the process a little bit faster. Maybe a little bit money will help, right? Okay. 
But we also we always pay the bribe. Like we pay the bribe for a what? For a fast track passport. You know, you get a passport for certain money, and but if you want it in two days, you can pay more. Don't you think that's a bribery? No. Okay. But that's uh, this is something Obama will go back to Africa, and. Tell the African people say, "Hey, no one will come to do a business if they know they have to pay bribe." And corruption in Kenya, his father's hometown, very bad.、Uh, so, bribe. You understand bribe, bribery.、Uh, if you want to learn the art of bribery, you have to read some of the old Chinese, you know, stories. Okay. Uh, my father passed me a very good story about bribery. The guy came to talk to you about your project, why it cannot be approved, right? So he sat down with you, and then he put his coat there, and and talk and talk, and then later he went back to his coat to get a cigarette. He's also checking whether you have put money in there or not. Okay, if not, he continue to smoke and come back and forth and just keep sitting there, and will not, you know, approve the project until he felt, hmm, kind of heavy now. Okay, pass. Okay, okay, you cannot see anything. So bribery a lot, right? There are, you know, Qing dynasties desk like this.、Uh, The drawer will open from here, but also you can open from here. Or、uh, you put money in there, and I can see, you know. Okay. So bribery,、uh, it's an art. I think you know we need to make it good. Okay.、Uh, so sometimes, sometimes if you do bribery,、uh, you need to make sure you bribe the person that the person really want to be bribed. Okay. Some people are some people are kind of. I won't say chicken, but they don't dare to take bribe. Okay, so if you bribe them, they will say, "Oh, so and so tried to bribe me," right? That's even worse. So one time, my father had a profession. My father is a legal consultant for an overseas Thai company, before Thailand company. They, they, you know, overseas Chinese. They lost track of how the Chinese operate. So he gave advice to this company when this company went to China. So my father sat there in a meeting, and then look at the body language. My father would say, "You can bribe this one, okay, but not too much, okay, just a little bit, you know."、Uh, and this one, this one, has big appetite, okay. So so you can see, you know, the body language.、Uh, so that's an art. I, so when I first came back here in Taiwan, my father said, "Oh, you're you're applying a job at NCCU. Do you think I should make some some you know pull some strings, call someone?" I said, "Don't do anything because in academic world, if you receive a phone call, it means you're dead. Okay, you know, if I receive a phone call on behalf of so and so, I would never support that candidate." Okay,、uh, that's academic. Academic is very strange. Okay,、uh, if someone try to you know change、uh, you know put someone's candidate there, fail. Okay, so we can participate in the pro- political process without retribution. What do you mean by retribution? Pan Yi Ming. Yeah, what is retribution? Retribution.、Uh, how many of you today,、uh, if you decide to go、uh, to join, I don't know when, when is our next、uh, demonstration against our government. I think it's in Tainan somewhere. Okay, so if you go to a anti-government demonstration or anti-university, okay, here you're not happy with Tsinghua University blocking, you know, the road all the time because of the construction. You protest. 
and you ask, you know, the president of the university should step down. And do you worry about retribution? What do you mean by retribution? Some kind of revenge against you, right? Some kind of uh, revenge saying, oh, oh, this student is creating problem. You know, why don't we just uh, ask some professor to purposely flunk this student so he will not be in trouble here, you know. So that's retribution. Uh, vote will be counted at least most of the time. Now, okay, now, do we all believe our vote counted? Yes or no? Hmm? Mr. Pan, what do you think of our, your vote? Have you ever voted? Not yet. Okay, so you're going to have an opportunity to vote this time, don't you think? In Xinzhu? No, you're not from Xinzhu. You're from where? Taipei. Okay, Taipei. Uh, so we are not going, we have the election next year. So when you go to vote, is your vote counted? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, why would a vote not count it? Well, 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 even if you voted, you know, saying, you know, it's an invalid ballot, that is still being counted as an invalid ballot. Fei-piao. But that's still being counted. But when is a vote not counted? Some countries disappear, vote disappear. Okay, uh, opposition candidates receive votes, and they found out votes disappear. Sometimes they found out votes not disappear, but being we call watered down. Like you go to vote, and already inside the box, there were already you know ballots supporting another candidate before even the election started. Okay, they were. We we call box stuffing, stuffing the box. Uh, stuff, stuffing. Stuffing is like, almost like uh, stuffing just okay, that's what we call stuffing the box. So sometimes uh, it's not count. So why Obama would say at least most of the time, what happened in America? Why would he say that? Huang Da Zhong, Wang Renhe, Xie Jun Da. Okay, is Yun or Yun Xie Yun Da? Okay. Why would Obama? I mean, here you have the first democracy in the world. They voted so many times, and Obama said at least most of the time, which means sometimes. Or once in a while, your vote didn't count. What happened? No, I don't think it's war. I mean, America has never been attacked. Okay, yeah, September 11 was an attack, but it, there was no vote. Okay. How, how, yes? Okay, Bush versus Gore in 2000, 2000 presidential election in Florida. Okay, so there were some votes, you know, kind of suspect, yeah? Uh, okay, uh, but, but that's because, uh, you know, the Democratic primary... Uh, already, you know, it's illegal for Michigan to move so f ahead. So you, you should stop campaigning at that time. Uh, but that one, okay, no problem. But in 2000 presidential election, yes. But also in Obama's own hometown called Chicago. Chicago had a big, we call Democratic machine. Sometimes you find that people also voted. I don't know about in Taiwan. Have we? Do we have dead people voting? Yeah. Yeah. We do. Okay. Um, so 
Uh, that's why, you know, it, I think most of the time it counted, but not counted as one vote, right? If there are more invalid ballot, then your vote is not 100%. Okay, so you understand uh, now. Uh, so Obama, at least in 2000, is referring to this case. And 2004, this election, presidential election, again, something happened in Ohio. Okay, there was some, some problem of counting the votes. And uh, my institute in 2000, you know, American election is on Tuesday evening. So by Wednesday morning, we will know the result. Like oh, about noontime, we should know the result. So we will have a, you know, American presidential uh, election, you know, result and analysis on Wednesday morning in Taiwan about 10 o'clock. And 2000, ooh, the election was still going. So, you know, like we have all the press, you know, the media coming, trying to get an expert's idea about what happened. Uh, found out, well, you know, the election didn't finish because there was some controversy in Florida, so we didn't have it. And then in 2004, the same thing in Ohio, because Ohio will determine who is going to win the election. So we didn't have that. So this time, 2008, we had another, you know, this kind of uh, conference. And then the media asked me, saying, Professor Yan, do you think this time we will have the result by Wednesday morning? You know, instead of having a deadlock or problem, I say yes. So it did happen, okay. But this is 2004. So twice, okay, there were some votes, voting problems here. Okay, let's take a break and we will try to finish uh, most of this. Uh, and you will have an idea of some of the democ democratic uh, processes in the U.S. And that document also. Started the American Revolution. Or actually, American Revolution started a year early, but uh, that almost like confirmed because of the Declaration of Independence and later in American Constitution. Remember, liberty, very important. Liberty means freedom. So in American Constitution, which was passed in 1789, and then especially we call the Bill of Rights, The first ten amendments of the Constitution talk about freedom of press, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of assembly. Uh, has something to do with the Declaration of Independence as well. That idea that you have certain inalienable rights, uh, including like uh, later we will learn. Okay. You cannot be searched without a warrant. Okay, so for example, if you're driving a car, if the police stop you today, they can look to see whether you have drink, alcohol. We call what do we call D W, not D Y I, D W I. What is D W I? Driving while intoxicated. Okay, that means you're drinking, you know, intoxicated. So DWI. But the police can only check to see whether you have liquor, you know, in the car. But they cannot ask you to open the trunk because that's your privacy. You know, for example, uh, 
some people might have this particular habit of wearing the other gender's clothes, right? So he put it in his trunk, and here the police found out, you know, no, that's my private life. Okay, you can only see something, okay, in the car. In we call plain view. Okay, two words. Okay, plain view means only those they they cannot search. Okay, that's a, a very important right. Right to privacy. Uh, so. Uh, very important document. Remember that one. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's continue. Xiao Fu Ten. Yeah. Uh, here, uh, in this 2004, that's the election year. I'll talk about we affirm the value and commitment, hold them against a hard reality, and see how. Are we measuring up to the legacy of the forebearers? So, what is first of all, what is forebearer? Like uh, Thomas Jefferson, Tom uh, James Madison, George Washington. These are the forebearers. Lincoln. Or in Taiwan's case, we will say something about Sun Yat-sen or, or anyone who passed away a long time ago. Excuse me. Hello? Hey. He can't do it. I've already found him. Hey. Yes, I've already found him. Okay. Okay, how bad? I'm still looking for the TA. I'm sorry. That's very important for my next class. Okay. I don't know why the TA called me during the class here. She should know I'm teaching. Uh, but anyway, okay. So so again, uh, you know, uh, all those people who who came before us, forebearers, 祖先 okay, 啊先贤 the promise of future generations. So, you know, like every period of time, you have to reaffirm your value. What is your value? You know, value of freedom, value of our liberty, all those commitment. What do you, what do you mean by commitment, Miss hmm? Chow? What is commitment? What happened if you know you're dating a girl? The girl said, "Are you committed?" What does that mean? Hmm? Are you serious? Are you you know? Are you going to marry me? You know? Oh, you're going to be responsible. You're 负责哈 Okay, so that's a commitment, 承诺 right? So commitment means you you pledge to do something. So this generation also has to do something as well to hold the value and you know continue to hold them, even though you have hard reality here. Good example, two thousand four, America hold the value of liberty, saying everything has to go through a. Process we call due process, 程序 Now, but what happened if you arrested someone who has been suspected to be a terrorist? Do we have to go through all all the you know the process saying oh the, you know uh, this person has the same right, or should we you know say this is an emergency you know? Uh, why do we have to go through the process? Why do we just, you know, put him、uh, in custody and never bring him to try,、uh, to trial? Because、uh, put him in the jail in, somewhere in Guantanamo Bay in Cuba, and then、uh, you know, give him some some you know torture.、Oh, torture will tell the truth. See, T and T, truth came out of torture. No. Okay.、Uh, no, you don't torture people, right? Even during this time. Okay, 2004. I was in the U.S. at this time. I did a research on the、uh, America called Patriot Act, 爱国法 
Patriot Act means, you know, uh, the government, in order to find out who are the terrorists, can, without your permission, find out what kind of books do you check out from the library, making a bomb, <laughs> you know, terrorist attack, you know, uh, injustice, you know, attack on America. People who read those books must be a terrorist, right? So, so that's how they try to find out. Or, or the website you visited, okay, find out Mr. Xiao during his leisure time always click on how to build a bomb. Okay, you must be a terrorist. Okay, now, but don't you think whatever website I visited should be my privacy? Okay, but the government said, no, 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 this is in merchant time. So, uh, you know, we need to find out who are the terrorists. So they try to, they violate all that, okay? One of the examples will be someone uh, who happened to be Pakistani background, but lived in the U.S. for 20-some years, or uh, already acquired American citizenship, but CIA, oh no, not CIA, FBI will come and talk to you, you know, and then the company said, oh, we have a potential terrorist here. And then you know, they fired the person. Okay. So we, at the time, uh, tried to recommend the American government that if you want to have a talk, right, please don't visit the workplace because the workplace people will get nervous. Right? Or uh, if you happen to be uh, we, got, we, we talk about DWI, driving while intoxicated, right? So sometimes, you know, in the past, people talk about DWB. You know, like if, if you happen to be an African-American like Obama, you drive a very expensive car. Then people will say, you must be a drug dealer. Right? How come? How can you afford this car? So driving while black, okay? Police will stop you. And now, after two thousand one, we have another one called FWA, flying while Arab. You know, if you are, you know, young Arab uh, people flying first class, terrorist, right? So we have American passenger got so terrified by having an Arab sitting in the first class, uh, you know, uh, on the plane, and asked the pilot to remove him because that brown people make me nervous. Okay, so that's where we talk about the time, you know, saying, you know, that's why Obama said uh, how. No matter against a hard reality, right? Are you still committed to freedom? Are you still committed to liberty? Okay. So here, uh, Zhang He Yu, Chiu Jia Yu, yeah. Uh, who are the independents? We have Democrats, we have Republicans, and then we have people who support Taiwan's independents, right? Now, that's the Americans. Americans, they have Democrats, they have Republicans, and they have people who support Taiwan independents. No? Who are the independents? Independents in Taiwan we call, yeah, the middle voters. People who are not affiliated with either side. Okay? People who are not registered as a party member. We call independent. So in America, usually it's about one third of each, depending on time. When Republicans were very popular one time, you know, during the 80s, majority, uh, not majority, plurality. Okay? More Republican than Democrats. I think right now, we have more Democrats, but sometimes when people are so, we call disillusion, lost all the hope of the two parties, they became independent. 
like what happened, I think, in Taiwan right now, right? Most people said, uh, you know, I remember in the 1990s, you know, we professors making a survey in the classroom. Very few students wanted to identify themselves as being a KMT member. You know, it's such an embarrassment. Like, where are you coming from? Are you from Mars? You know, like a KMT, this corruption party, you know, this old party, this dinosaur. You belong to that dinosaur? Okay, that's back in the 1990, right? And then two years ago, after the DPP, all the corruption, like, ooh, no, no. <laughs> no, I asked the student, most of the students said, no, 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 we don't belong to any political party, right? So mo every student now is, you know, some went back to the KMT, but now, ooh, no, no, I'm independent. I'm independent, right? So we are all independent now. Right? Because the two parties are so embarrassing. So th but in the U.S., independent uh, are the ones who the two parties trying to win them over. Okay? More work to do. Okay? He talked about uh, his experience of Galesburg in Illinois. People who work there, union jobs. Remember, union job, always good pay. How good? Okay. Well, I was a university professor in the U.S. Uh, my job, my university paid for my health insurance, which is nice. But I have to pay for my wife and my two, two boys' health insurance. And uh, the university says, since you're part of our big family, I'll give you 25% discount. But that's still a lot. My wife is an elementary school teacher. Her insurance cover her and the whole family because she belonged to a union. I love the union. Okay. Uh, so union job, uh, good protection and always you know, good benefits and better pay. So this guy who worked there have a union job, but he lost the union job. Right, Maytag. How many of you know Maytag? Maytag is a tag you put it on in, in the month of May. Well, Maytag is a very famous uh, washer dryer, you know, uh, appliance, electric appliances. Electric appliances, okay? Pro producing electric appliances. But the commercial, I always remember. You have two workers who work for Maytag as maintenance worker, maintaining, you know, if you, you know, repairman. They, they said, they fell asleep, like it was so boring because nobody called them because the machine never break down. Okay, that's the, that's the commercial, okay, of Maytag. So, but hey, uh, union job pay a lot. How do you cut the cost? Moving the factory to Mexico. Sounds familiar in Taiwan? You know, you work for the factory in Taiwan. Uh, then, you know, during the weekend, you visit your relatives. And then next morning, you went to the factory. Gone! You know, it's locked. The factory already moved to China. Oh, this happened as well. Why? Saving the cost of the labor. Right? So they moved to Mexico. And so he lost his job, right? And now, if you want to find a new job, you have to compete with your children for jobs only pay seven bucks, seven dollars an hour. Okay, I mentioned union job, maybe thirty dollars an hour. Okay, how how are you going to go back to compete? And uh, also, you know, uh, he talked about. Uh, he met another one who lost his job and then trying to hold back his tears because he didn't know how to pay $4,500 uh, $4, a month for the drug the son needs without the health benefit. Okay, now, uh, I are Chang. Okay, now, health care. Uh, in Taiwan, have you heard anyone say we should abolish our national health care? 
Do you know we have one? Yes, I have. You have even you have one. Okay. Now, even you have one. But so it's uh, almost a consensus we all love our health care here. Right? Only few people like the doctors, I think they don't like. Okay. But in the United States, health care is private. So most of the time you have to the company provides you with health care. Um, I remember the first time I went, I got my job offer. They said, oh, this is what you earn. I said, wow, this much? No, that's adding all the benefits, you know, all the health insurance, the social security, the you know, unemployment compensation. So, they, you know, like in order to hire you, if maybe I pay you $30, but I pay additional $20, to cover your health care, every other thing. So hiring someone full time, very expensive, because of the health care. Okay, health care in America is so expensive. Okay, uh, you can pay only the deductible. Uh, if you have one, we call it deductible. Chinese call zhi fu kuan, isn't it? Called zhi, ji fu, isn't it? Zhi fu. 中文叫什么?自己付的一部分 Like uh, right now you visit the doctor in the hospital 自付款 OK, we call it deductible OK, so let's say you know you, you have to pay 20% But a single visit You know, if you have a flu, you visit a doctor $70 to $100 per visit With insurance, right? And with insurance you say, oh OK, I only have to pay 20% so that's $20. That's with insurance. More expensive than here without insurance in Taiwan. Okay? That's one. And then even if you have insurance, sometimes it's a, you know, we have $1,000 deductible. It means if you spend more than $1,000, then we begin to cover. You know, it's like, oh, okay. You know, I need to work very hard to get sick so I can, you know, at least accumulate. You know, finally, out of my pocket, I pay one hundred and one thousand and ten dollar. Finally, the insurance company said, yeah, we will cover that ten dollar. You know, after one year, you accumulate one hundred one thousand dollar of medical bill. That's crazy. So that's healthcare. Okay, but still, you know, this guy might need it, right? He need his son need the health benefit. And the benefit is so important to have to be insured. Okay. I'm not sure how many of us today in Taiwan like worry a lot. You know, I'm not insured. You know, it's like uh, I, I don't have my clothes on. You know, in America, it's almost like if you're not insured, uh, like you're missing something. Uh, uh, I think the feeling is almost for you guys is like if you go to visit your grandparents during the summer without bringing your laptop. Okay? I think that's the same kind of feeling. Okay, when you don't have insurance. Okay, you just don't feel comfortable at all. You, you don't know what to do. Okay? So, uh, here, that's why Obama in 2004 mentioned about health insurance, health care, and now he's talking about health insurance as well. Okay, and one more he said about the east, uh, you know, the, the girl in the eastern St. Louis, that's also in Illinois, his state, right? She had the grade, she has the drive, so what do you mean by the drive here? Uh, Wang Bo Chen, Lin Gen Yi, yeah, what do you mean by the drive? She has a car? What do you mean by the drive? Do you have the drive? You know, do you have the drive to you know become a potential employee uh, for the uh, UMC uh, for the TSMC or something? You know, what is uh, the drive? You know, like like the the li uh, uh, what is the Chinese word um, the drive uh, hmm? dong li okay but you know motivation okay almost like that so she she has the motivation she has good grades has the will 
right? Will has the will. Also, 有一个有一个遗嘱，不是。<laughs> What do you mean by will? Determination, right? She has the determination, ah,、uh, motivation, and good grades, but cannot go to college because she doesn't have money. Okay, American education is also very expensive. Ah,、uh, so here, you know, Obama is talking about the the you know the real people he met and the real problem. This will appear in American political speech a lot. They always like to use real people, and our politician. I I don't know why they cannot figure out. You know, give you real stories about why they are running for presidency, why they are. You know,、uh, what kind of problem do they see? They can only talk about abstract. They cannot name people. Okay, so this is important to name people. So here, Obama said.、Uh, He said the people I met in small town and big city, in diners and office parks. Diners, you know, all those、uh, you know,、uh, small restaurants. They don't expect government to solve all their problems. They know they have to work hard to get ahead, and they want to. Okay, so this is important again. The idea of government. Obama is always trying to bring a little bit of the Republican idea as well. He believe in government. Can do something, but still, individual has to do others. Okay, the Republican gov- politician on the other side, on the other hand, will say, never trust the government. Right? People look up to the government for the solution of their problems. The government is the problem. Okay. So in Taiwan, the same thing. Never trust the university bureaucracy can solve your problem. They are the problem. Okay. Never trust, you know, the government to、uh, give you answer. So Obama said, you know, they want to work hard, but but if you go to the color counties, I mean, blue color county, white color, around Chicago, people would tell you they don't want their tax money wasted by a welfare agency or by the Pentagon. Okay, so now. Welfare agency. What is a welfare agency?、Um, Wang Sun. What is a welfare agency? Social welfare agency. Can you give me an example? Okay, let's、uh, talk about maybe you know those social workers who help、uh, the low-income family, right?、Uh, so that's a welfare agency, and you know in America sometimes they say, well, even if you're low-income, you can still get government to help you to rent an apartment. So government subsidize 津贴 some of your rent, but because you're low-income, if a single mother Two kids, you need a three-bedroom apartment. If the two kids are one boy, one girl, right? One, you know, teenage girl, teenage boy cannot live in one room. So mother one room, one girl one room, one boy one room. For the Republican, they will think you waste money on that. So they don't want your money to be wasted by a welfare agency. That's the Republican attack. The democratic attack will be: don't waste our money on all those expensive toys by Pentagon. What is Pentagon? 五角五角玩具五角大厦 What does that mean? What is 五角大厦 National defense. Okay, department. Okay, minister.、Uh, what do we call、it? Department of、uh, Defense? Okay, DOD. So. Uh, the Democrat said, "We don't want you to buy those weapons." The Republican said, "We don't want you to waste money on welfare." But no matter what, people just do not want the government waste money. Okay, period. Okay, so you can see that. And then, 
going the neighborhood. They said, you know, the government、uh, alone cannot teach our kids to learn. Parents have to teach. Okay, so no problem. Children can achieve unless we raise their expectation and turn off the television sets. I think I we just confiscate your laptop. Then you know you can study, right?、Uh, and eradicate. Okay, 核心家 What do you mean by eradicate? The slander. They, let's say black youth with a book is acting white.、Hmm? Okay, eradicate. We a lot of time we use that word for poverty. We call poverty eradication. Show me what poverty. What is poverty? Poverty, P O V E R T Y. You know that word, right? Okay, so you know the condition of being poor. So eradicate that. A lot of time we use that word, but here eradicate the slander means you know people who attack. You know, give the wrong impression that black with a book is acting white. Okay, like oh black, either you do what sports or music or drugs. If you carry a book,、uh, uh, come on, be be real. I mean, that's、uh, that's not real.、Uh, real black don't do that, right? Carrying a book is acting white.、Uh, so it's almost like、uh, if a black、uh, enter a a a mass club that's acting Asian,、huh? or an Asian go to a a a basketball camp that's acting black or. You know something like that.、Uh, so, you know what do we call that? We call stereotype. Okay, Ste- stereotype.、Uh, we assume a lot of things. Okay, you don't have that kind of feeling here. The Asians in America, some some of them got really frustrated because they are not interested in math and science, but the teacher will think, you know, you are Asian, you must be good with math and science, okay? So so that's a big problem, right? When you have that stereotype, okay? So,、uh, black. Can read books. That's not acting white. Okay, so they he he said they know all those, but they don't they don't expect government to solve all their problem. But that they want to know here. Okay, if deep in their bone, if just change a priority here. Huang Weizhi, yeah. What do you mean by change of priority? Then every children have a shot for a decent life. That's a decent shot at life. What 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 do you mean by change of priority? Priority? Do you understand priority? Okay. You know what is your priority? Your parents said, "Well, you know, your priority is just to study hard." They said, "No, I, I study hard enough. I'm in university. My priority is student club." My priority is dating.、Uh, no, it's not dating. It's a relationship. Okay,、uh, I think that's better.、Huh? Okay. So,、uh, government priority, 先后优先次序 right? So here,、uh, he said, if if we don't spend all those money on defense, maybe don't you think we should have more money for hungry childrens? You know, like yeah. I have a decent shot at life. I'm always hungry. Now, how can I study if I'm always hungry? Okay, so, and the doors of opportunity remain open to all, not those who have, you know, are in poverty. So they want government to do better, and they want the choice here. So here he talk about the Democratic Party. Okay,、uh, I think we we, we know this,、uh, you know, John Kerry a little bit about him. Uh, very important things about 
a American presidential candidate throughout history, but not anymore. Okay, is heroic service to Vietnam. Okay, Pan Yian. Yeah, what is uh, you know this Vietnam thing here? Heroic service to Vietnam. What does that mean about John Kerry? Hmm? He operates some kind of travel agency to go to Vietnam. What, did, what does that mean? Heroic service to Vietnam. In Vietnam. Okay, first of all, I know you were, you know, born right after, uh, many, many years after this, we call Vietnam War. Have you heard of Vietnam War? Okay, so Vietnam War was the last big American war. Right now we have the Persian Gulf War, we have the Iraqi War, but, you know, in American history, most politicians need to have the resume put it there, also being a veteran. It's good. You know, Americans love heroes. So if you've been to the military, it's always a plus. Only in the last few times we have, like, President Bush, President Clinton. Those two didn't go to Vietnam War uh, because their family tried to get them out of uh, war by, you know, uh, being a Coast Guard, you know, or, or being a National Guard, Kuomintang, or, or, you know, some people go to graduate school, so you, you don't have to go to Vietnam War. Back in 1988, the, the old Bush, you know there are two Bush presidents? The old Bush has a young vice presidential candidate by the name of Dan Quayle, very young. So people said, how come you didn't go to Vietnam War? He said, gosh, you know, I didn't know I would be standing here now. If I knew it, I would. <laughs> okay, so uh, important. Okay, John Kerry. Funny, yeah. Democratic Party presidential candidate went to Vietnam War. Republican Party always for strong defense. President Bush in two thousand four didn't go to military service. Okay, so so they try to twist it his heroic records, but then. He also has his year as prosecutor, Ms. Pan. What is prosecutor? Prosecutor, very, very important job right now in Taiwan, right? Someone who indict you, you know, list all the crimes you committed, and then submit it to the court. That's what we call prosecutor. Uh, so, Jian Cha Guan, prosecution. Uh, but sometimes, uh, I think, you know, our former president has been prosecuted, and, but he said he, he has been persecuted. So, what's the difference between prosecute and persecute? What is persecute? Prosecute and persecute. What's the difference? Prosecute, persecute. You said, well, both are pretty cute, huh? <laughs> so what's the difference? Uh, Q per se, no? Persecute. Prosecute. Okay, President Chen right now claim political persecution by the KMT. Okay, so Qi Su can be a poor high. And then after Qi Su can be Execution, huh? but I don't think we have that. Okay, execute. Okay. So here, uh, 
believe we have the the uh, John Kerry's background, and you know the the, the you know uh, he served as a prosecutor uh, because he got a law degree, uh, and then lieutenant governor. What do you mean by lieutenant governor, Ms. Pan? What is a lieutenant governor? Uh, governor who once uh, served in the military as a lieutenant. Lieutenant governor. It's uh, we call deputy or vice governor. I don't think we use vice. We use vice minister. We use deputy sheriff. What is it? Lieutenant governor. Not the governor, but lieutenant governor. Fu Okay. Uh, deputy mayor. Fu Okay. I don't know why don't we call it lieutenant mayor. Uh, governor, lieutenant. Okay. Mayor, deputy. Okay. Just, uh, you know, and then. Also, sometimes people will use uh, vice, you know, minister. I don't know why, they, why don't they use lieutenant min minister, uh, but they use vice minister. Okay, so you understand. So two decades in the U.S. Senate, he was elected in 1984. So two decades, and that's John Kerry again. It make tough choice when easier ones were available. Uh, this is always politicians talk, saying, you know, good politicians make tough choices. They always say that. Okay, I want you to finish this one, and I also want you to read a little bit of this one. I was try to send you. This was back in 1984, uh, at the time. Also, keynote speech in the Democratic Convention Center. This is where Ma Mario Cuomo of the New York City, a mayor, he talked about the difference between the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. Okay, and. I think this is a good part to understand the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. So I'll just read the first part here. He said, it's an old story, as old as our history. The difference between the Democrats and Republicans always being measured in courage okay, and confidence. The Republicans believe that the wagon train will not make it to the frontier unless some of the old some of the young, some of the weak are left behind. Only the strong, they tell us, will inherit the land. So it means, okay, you know, you're disabled, you already know this, you know, no, you know, we, you become burden to us. But he said, the Democrats, okay, believe in something else, believe that we can make all the way with the whole family, you know, together. Uh, Chinese will be Chinese, just a, Okay, and we have more than once. Okay, so he begin talk about the history, you know, of taking care of the disabled, you know, disadvantaged groups. Okay, that's always they try to make the distinction. So you would know the party next week. We will talk about the difference of the two parties. Okay, and if you have the book of Obama, there is a chapter on the two parties, okay, the Republican and Democrats. Okay. okay, see you next week.